So this is just a little mini, 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 mini workshop preview, but you'll, I hope you walk away with some real hand and foot breathing knowledge that you can incorporate to your day to day, into your day to day life today. So my name is Dunya, and I love to breathe because it makes me feel fantastic and it lets me be um, very, very present, and it also is one of the most healing things that I can do in my life, uh, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And I believe that 100 years from now, this will be preventative medicine of the future. <laughs> I became enamored with the cathartic breath, which is basically <coughs> connecting your inhale and exhale and adding consciousness. So breathing consciously, and uh, when I was a medical anthropologist at Harvard Medical School working with Dr. John Mack, who is the founder of the psychiatric department, and I was able to sit on in his sessions that he did with people that had PTSD, there's some chairs right here, and also people that have had uh, the incomplete experience of being abducted on spaceships. So as a medical anthropologist, I was very happy to see that people that have these expansion experiences um, sometimes can get traumatized. And he used cathartic breath work. He didn't use talk therapy. He didn't use hypnotherapy. He used cathartic breath work to help people um, come more into a centered kind of being in their life again and release their PTSD. And I was amazed at that. And that really made me go native, made me go native meaning that I didn't get abducted on a spaceship. Oh, I, I don't recall it, but I said, you know, this is what I really want to learn. And I left academia, and I started to teach cathartic breath work. And now I have my own private practice in Worcester and Boston. And um, it's life changing. So what happens is if you take a conscious breath rather than an unconscious breath, is that the prana energy traveling on the breath will immediately come into your body with consciousness and highlight anything in your body that's not moving so much. So this is a higher frequency breath because you're breathing it consciously. So at nighttime, you're also breathing, connecting your inhale and exhale. <laughs> but what is missing? Consciousness. So adding consciousness to the breath is an absolute game changer. When you add consciousness to the breath within five minutes of breathing consciously, um, your heart rate variability goes up, meaning that the way your heart responds to external and internal circumstances is actually increased, which is wonderful. So anybody shooting here for longevity, this is the name of the game cathartic breath work, doing this three times a day for five minutes with a count of five on the inhale, five on the exhale. And we'll be practicing that in a little bit. So um, these are two workshops that I'm teaching um, coming up at Falls River Yoga Studio this Friday from 6 to 8. And then on August 2nd uh, at Studio Zenith from 3 to 5. That's when you can have a full breathing session, a full breathing cycle, which is about 50 to 60 minute, minutes long. But today you'll have about three five minute segments where you learn how to breathe. And I just need to tune you in a little bit to that, what you might experience. The first thing that you experience is feeling a little bit like a French water bottle au gazeuse, <laughs> which means you're going to feel all these bubbles in your system. And this is really physiologically speaking, and we call that in the cathartic breath world, tingling. So any time you listen to a beautiful Beethoven sonata, or you see a beautiful painting, or you have really great sex, or you will win a million dollars, you will have this kind of tingling in your body because you're opening up and your breathing changes and you're connecting your breath and you're becoming conscious of your breath and you're becoming really alive and excited, meaning you're going above the breathing threshold. The breathing threshold is usually where we keep ourselves, is this invisible divisive line that basically lets you breathe hardly next to nothing, so you just barely survive. So you go through life like this. And then somebody will say, why are you breathing so much? 
And then you stop breathing even more, which is not good. And then there you go. So that's what we usually do. We don't, we don't bring consciousness to our breath. The only other beings on the planet that breathe consciously, except for multidimensional beings, like on the planet Sirius, there's these Syrian cetaceans that breathe consciously all the time, sort of like our cetaceans in the ocean that are also conscious breathers, dolphins and whales. This is why people go swimming with them, because literally your whole energy anatomy changes when you start swimming with dolphins because they're conscious breathers. Their brain never turns off and they're always somewhat breathing consciously. So what happens first is again, this prana energy comes to the place in your body, highlighting anything in your body that's kind of tight and not moving so much. So anything that is energetically or physiologically or emotionally holding back gets highlighted by this conscious breath. And you will feel that when we practice this in a couple of minutes, that suddenly like, ooh, I, I didn't know my neck was a little tight. So suddenly you feel tingling in your neck or you have some digestive stuff, immediately you might feel tingling in your digestive tract or in your kidneys or in your head or wherever it is that you experience tension and stress usually. So this highlighting of the life force energy on the conscious breath means that it wants to dance with you and it wants to release whatever is holding. So um, let it happen, let this tingling happen throughout your body and um, you will experience also within five minutes your heart going into heart coherence. So greater heart rate variability doesn't mean that your heart is nice and static. People always say, no, my heart is peaceful and there's like, it should be like, like, like this. Well, like this is dead. <laughs> So you want things like this. You want things like a tennis player going whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And every time, you know, with every inhale, with every inhale, the heart brings in the, um, uh, the sympathetic nervous system, gets activated. With every exhale, the parasympathetic nervous system gets activated. So it's wonderful. In some way, you're stimulating your sympathetic nervous system. In the other way, you're stimulating your parasympathetic nervous system. So actually, the more the heart can respond to outside stimuli and inside stimuli, the healthier you are, the less stressed you are, the more you are in a meditative centered state. <laughs> so that's great. Greater heart rate variability and you can reach that five minutes three times a day. You have to do this exercise that we're doing today preferably in the morning before you wake up and you have your first cup of coffee. So um, not before you wake up, but you wake up and then don't do your to-do list and do this exercise. It's nice to sit up straight with your spine you know, erect because that way you are able to really inflate your lungs and your torso. Um, then before lunch, before you have your lunch, and then at nighttime before you sleep. And if you feel like you're more anxious throughout the day, do it more often, mm -hmm. right? Everybody, um, we are going to do the first round, and we're going to do it about five minutes. And what we're going to do is, you don't have to count much, but basically you take a deep inhale into your belly and then bring it up to your upper chest. The upper chest is like our lungs, right? And our lungs, we use a third of our lungs. It's just like our brain. We use a third of our brain capacity. We have these huge lungs with these alveoli, like an upside down tree inside your being. And if you really were to inflate your lungs, you would be, it, it would be a blissful experience 24 seven. So now what you're gonna feel like, because you are more of a bottom dweller breathing and you're not used to really bring up the breath into the belly, into the upper chest, you might feel possibly a little dizzy, but that's okay. Dizzy just means that there's more oxygen coming into your system and you're breathing out more carbon dioxide, which is what you want. The, the second medical physiological benefit is while you're breathing out carbon dioxide, guess what? It affects your blood acidity. Within five minutes 
of breathing like that, you will turn from an acidic environment in terms of your blood acidity and all of your acidity in your being into an alkaline basic state, which is anybody with acid reflux, it's a no-brainer. So you breathe like this, more oxygen, less carbon dioxide, more alkalinity. Yeah? And you can be relaxed, have your legs uncrossed, and what we're going to do is just take a deep inhale and relax on the exhale, and we do this for about five minutes. Any questions before we start flying? <laughs> yes. Is it important to have your feet flat on the floor, or does that matter? Yeah, it's good to have your, you know, if, you, if you're cutting things off like that, it's, uh, you know, you're basically cutting off circulation. So having your feet flat on the floor is wonderful. Um, you know, spine erect is wonderful. And then just take a deep inhale, relaxing on the exhale, and keep on doing it. And if you get a little dizzy, that's not a problem. That's probably in relationship to your birth scenario. So this work was in the 1950s um, um, called Rebirthing by Leonard Orr, which was the first cathartic breathwork modality here on the planet, although yogis have been doing it for centuries, but bringing it to the West, he brought it to the West. And from that, many different cathartic breathwork modalities came to the United States, to Europe. One of them is mine, Art of Natural Breathing, Holotrophic Breathwork, Transformational Breath, Vivation Method, you name it. They're all very, very similar. If you go out there to find a practitioner, all I ask you is that people have worked with this for at least five years. Mm -hmm. Because it's powerful work, they'll have to know what the breath is doing when they work with you individually. So nowadays it becomes like an exercise fad. This is not an exercise fad, this is very powerful, medicine that heals on deep emotional levels as well as physiological levels. So it's, it's really just touching it and scratching the surface with our little exercises now. But when you come for the breath work in the workshops, you will see the power of this um, application and you will, will go through a full breathing cycle. Yes? Um, I have a quick question. Is there anyone who can do this wrong? No. Okay. No, no. And are, do we inhale through nose and exhale through mouth? What we're going to do is, it's not wrong to use the nose, but it will just activate your upper energy vortexes. What we want to do is go through the mouth because you get more air in through your mouth. So deep inhale through the mouth and then relaxing on the exhale. So you're basically dumping your exhale. I'll show you. And just to let you know, you can't do it wrong. This is the foundational breath. If you are coming to me for a full breathing cycle and session, your breath will go to 50 different breathing patterns. <laughs> so depending on what goes on inside your inner landscape and emotions, your breath will change. Depending on what goes on with your sensations in your body, your breath will change. Depending on what goes on in the outside environment, your breath will change. It's kind of like your heart. That's why you get greater heart rate variability when you're breathing like that. Yeah, so it's not advisable to do this in a car or while you're always walking around shopping at, you know, Shaw's or wherever you're shopping at. <laughs> because pretty soon you'll be feeling like you're walking on LSD, you know. It's, it's a very powerful, <laughs> conscious kind of drug that you're dealing with when you're breathing like that. And, um, uh, but for five minutes, it's wonderful. Three times a day, I can let you loose like this. So do not try this on your own for one hour because it's like trying to fly a plane without a license. You need to know yourself. If you come to me for private session, I have 10 foundational private sessions. I'm a breath therapist. And it looks at your birth scenario, it looks at your whole biography, each, each session is a different session. By the end of those 10 sessions, I can let you loose and you can breathe on your own for the rest of your life. Because then you know, but I have to watch you for about five times to see how you can optimize your breath, how you're holding your breath, what is your inhale and exhale doing, because the way you breathe right now, is the way you live your life. Mm -hmm. When you change the way you breathe, you change everything about your life. Absolutely everything. Your relationships, your work, everything. <laughs> and I know because I'm an example of it. It's amazing. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I'm a forceps birth, so I used to go through life very, very unconsciously. When I came to cathartic breath work within 
I think five breathing session, I breathed out all the chemical anesthesia that was left in my body from my mother taking huge amounts of drugs at her birth, which is actually still lodged in our cellular memories. That's why it's so important to talk to, I was talking to Central Vermont Hospital a couple of weeks ago with a big group of women that were in the birthing field and working with conscious birth. So your birth scenario is still in you unconsciously and you can release that by working with this cathartic breath work, which is absolutely wonderful and it will change your life. Yeah. So now we're going to fly a little bit. So what we're going to do is for first you're going to first you're going to watch me. Um, please come in as quickly as you can because we're getting already into the experiential stuff. So you, there's a chair right here. Oh, right there. Perfect. So first you're going to watch me, and remember this is only a foundational breath, so you can't do it wrong because you're always breathing with relationship to what is going on in the outside environment and inside, but for now you're using this foundational breath. And I'm going to show you how to breathe this foundational breath. When I go like this, I want everybody to sort of copy me, yeah? So for this I can actually stand up so you can see me better. Um, and you can all remain sitting, nobody has their legs crossed, great. Put your hands maybe on your, on your, on your thighs. And uh, here we go. So I'm gonna start breathing into my belly, into my upper chest, deep inhale, relax on the exhale. And then I'm gonna sit down once I get going because I will start to feel a little bit more enlivened. <laughs> so sitting helps. Here we go. Everybody. All the way up here, I want all your lungs to be inflated. Yes, you don't have to synchronize, just go for it. A little bit more oomph, gentlemen, right here on the upper chest, go for it. Nobody can make you breathe, you are the one that can do it. Right, and dump your exhale. Don't hold your exhale, don't control it. There you go, again. As soon as your inhale is done, you exhale and you pick up the inhale again. That's right. Beautiful, a little more deep. On the upper chest, deeper. <laughs> Keep on going. You'll feel tingling fairly soon. Good. Good. Beautiful. A little deeper on the inhale. That's excellent. Open your eyes. A little deeper. Yes. Good. A little deeper. Don't worry if you're coughing, you just cough and then go back into the breathing rhythm. Beautiful. A little deeper. A little deeper. Take some effort, that's right. And you try to breathe through your yawn. Lady in the black t-shirt, a little bit more effort on your inhale. You really want to take a full inhale. Yes, that's good. Good, everybody keep on going. Yes, that's good. Even more on your inhale. Beautiful. Keep on going. Inflating all those lung wings like an angel. Don't focus on your yawn. Yawning means your body craves the oxygen. So you want to have even more inhale. Beautiful. Keep on going.
Yes, keep on going. You can't faint. Don't worry. You're sitting in a, in a chair. Yes. Release your um, forehead wrinkles right here. Yes, a little bit more. A little bit more on the inhale. Lean back if you can. Look at me, lean back, yes. Keep on going. Beautiful. Two more minutes. Yeah, you might feel that the room gets a little brighter already. More inhale, more inhale on the orange shirt. Inhale. Keep on going. Beautiful, everyone. This is one more minute. And your heart will get, get well, heart rate will come into natural heart coherence. Keep on going. Don't stretch, don't stretch in the orange shirt. Keep on breathing. And that means that you feel more meditative, more centered through the mouth. You might already have some tingling. Keep on going. Let's see. Keep on going. Yes, don't stop. Good. <coughs> Beautiful. Keep on going. Yes. Nice. And the pink shirt in the back, more. But just by this four and a half minutes, everything has changed. Sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system have changed. They are much more equal. Um, your heart rate variability has become much greater. There's more tingling in your body. You're probably perceiving colors much more intensely. That's what you want. The tingling energy is your ticket to health. That means more oxygen, more prana. Awesome. So remember the tingles, the prana energy goes first where you need it the most. So head, chest, legs is probably where you need it the most. If you do this for five more minutes, you will feel your whole core start to vibrate and buzz, and eventually the whole body will start to vibrate and release major amounts of whatever is stored in your tissue as hold back and tension. So it's a huge healing process. Yes, so the first five minutes of breathing like that, your periphery is usually starting to tingle, your hands and your feet. Give it five more minutes, it's your lower arms, your lower legs. Give it five more minutes, it's the rest of your body everywhere vibration and tingling. And people will also have states of bliss, conscious bliss that they're experiencing with this. So it's a, it's a kind of happy modality. <laughs> Although if you do have incomplete experiences from the past, usually half the room is laughing hysterically and the other half is crying. So that's totally fine. It's a cathartic process. Catharsis in Greek means the breathing out of demons and dragons. So that's wonderful. It's a clearing of the whole energy in that way. And you do this three times a day, your expansion in your upper chest will increase. So your spaciousness in the upper chest where you're breathing, where your lungs uh, are, will increase. And you probably get rid of all the gunk and phlegm and everything in your lungs. So it's uh, taken to health for you. And yes, the inhale is where the sympathetic nervous system gets activated, where we are efforting a little bit. The exhale, we're not efforting at all. I have a lot of people that are long distance runners that I work with and they say, oh my God, I need to usually run 40 minutes to have my endorphins release in my brain like that to feel this high. And they're getting it within 10 minutes and they're not doing anything, just breathing. Because when you're running and doing yoga, you're bleeding away about 80% of your energy. So this means you're going way above the breathing threshold very quickly because you're not doing any physical movement. Mm -hmm. If you're ever depressed, 
this is great to do. Or you're feeling kind of low or whatever, it's better than going for that sugar stack. You just sit at your office desk and you do five minutes of this, you'll feel a marked change in your whole consciousness, your awareness, everything. Where like the drum that you're beating, eventually when you're a good drummer, you feel like the drum is beating you, the breath will breathe you eventually. And it becomes extremely effortless. But that is a little while into the session. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Yes, throbbing, tingling, yeah. vibration, absolutely. Um, and also a little of the same in my chest, which is interesting because I've broken every bone in my chest. Yes. Over 20 years ago. Yeah, um, so that's where it goes first. I, yeah. yeah. Any injuries, have. any kind of yeah. physiological accidents that you have left over remnants from cellularly, the breath will go first there, the conscious yeah. breath, and start to heal it. Mm -hmm. Even back injuries, I have people come that have gone to acupuncture, chiropractic, everything, two breathing sessions gone. Yeah. It's powerful physiologically as well as emotionally and spiritually. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you could do it before you got out of bed in the morning. Yes. And you know, if you were to do this regularly, yes, you can. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were to do this regularly, this is the ticket to into your brain and into your nervous system. Mm -hmm. So to calm down your nervous system and to get you out of fight or flight or any mm -hmm. kind of anxiety, this is the ticket to it. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, that's why some of you feel it here as well, because usually people with anxiety disorder that I see as private clients, this is where it is at. It is amazing, it is amazing. So in the five minutes you're scratching the yeah. surface now, when you go longer than five minutes, that was your question, the gentleman back there, you're getting into emotional, like psycho-spiritual territory. Mm -hmm. And that's wonderful as well, but that's a whole different ball game, which is why you can come to these workshops and they're wonderful and I'll talk more in depth of what your experience will be when you do full 50 minutes of this and it's also incredible. So, so typically with people that hold their brother, my husband is one of them, he would always, <sighs> like, no, he's like a martial artist when you do that kind of chico. <sighs> I'm like, no, no, just relax, just dump it, just like skiing down the mountain. And eventually he's like, what are you telling me? I'm doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. So it was amazing because he had that pattern of controlling the exhale and I was basically asking him to change a major pattern in his life that was related to relaxing. Mm -hmm. And why is it possible to let life come to you and you don't always have to orchestrate every single minute of your life? Mm -hmm. And you have a good cathartic breathing therapist, after 10 sessions you're on your own and you have this for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And it is a ticket to longevity. Because even myself, I have so many emotional holdbacks. You know, I think, oh, I'm doing really great. I'm, I'm, everything is fine. You know, I'm just perfect. <laughs> you know, and then I lie down for my breathing session, and within ten minutes, like I'm bawling my eyes out because we always operate on the surface kind of mask what we present to the outside world mentality. We rarely learn to check on in with our inner landscape. Mm -hmm. So this is like an inner journey for you to discover like, ooh, you know, wow, like, like I didn't know I was doing that and, and look at that, I'm really sensitive over here and wow, I'm seeing all these angels and guardians and spirit things suddenly, you know, so that's a nice, um, nice benefit of the cathartic breath too, it opens up levels of consciousness. Yeah, and to the uh, more deeper aspects of the cathartic breath, emotional things will come up that um, are part of cellular memories from the past. So our birth scenario can get triggered. So you, what you're feeling might not necessarily be what you're feeling right now. It might be an incomplete experience coming up from the past to get released. So when you're holding positions in yoga, you're bleeding away about 80% of your energy because you're holding positions physically. That's why we're lying down. When we're lying down, we're not moving unless involuntarily releasing things. And you can fill yourself completely with 100% prana. So incorporating in, in, in yoga practice, probably not. Mm -hmm. It's its own kind of modality, yeah.
a nice thought. <laughs> Your heart responds to the outside and stimulus. The last thing you want is for your heart to not do these little skips in whatever it is doing. Every time it does skips and things like that, it's like, yay! <laughs> and then you sit down and breathe for five minutes. And the reason we don't breathe is why do you think we don't breathe? Because we have, we learn the first time we come as babies onto this planet, and many of you were born in the 50s and 60s and possibly 40s, and how do you come in as birth? Mm-hmm. And then you start screaming, mm-hmm. right? It's not the most wonderful thing, not the, like the Hawaiian mm-hmm. indigenous people birthing their babies in the ocean, mm-hmm. where the baby gets to like, you know, rest and take its own breath, and the umbilical cords get slowly dislodged, you know, when the uh, when the pulsation mm-hmm. stops, and the, no trauma with the first breath. But most of us have that, and as a result of that transitioning scenario, we get scared. But in cathartic breath work, you will release that. You, you do only do it two times a day or one time a day. It's nice, you have some nice effects, but you really need to do it like brushing your teeth. If you do this three times a day for five minutes, this will have an effect for the first three days for four hours afterwards. You will feel more centered and present and alive. And then for weeks after that. So you, do, you keep on doing this for months, you'll have the effects longer and longer and longer. It's amazing, yeah. Yes. So there's a lot of involuntary movements that can happen at the beginning when you first start to clear your house. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I could, I can't stop. Yeah, you can't stop. I know you're still doing it. That's great. That means your body wants it. Yes. Yeah. That means you're ready for it, and your body wants it. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. I'm just curious if you ever work with addicts in recovery. Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's it's amazing. It's amazing. It's very, very helpful mm-hmm. because they get out of their personality and their personal kind of stuff and they get into the transpersonal. Mm-hmm. And the transpersonal means basically the realm of spirit mm-hmm. and consciousness. And when you are like Stanislav Grof, the, the psychiatrist that invented uh, holotropic breath work. Um, He worked with non-rehabilitatable prisoners in um, California, and he did uh, cathartic breath work with them. And within like two sessions or something, they were like, um, is there woodworking here? Do we have yoga? What can we do? Is there a library? And these were people that were completely uninterested. Um, And so it it really works on the inside of your essence as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, so if you have more questions, we go for another round. We have 10 more minutes left, and we go for another round. Any more questions before this? <coughs> yes. It's got to be good for your complexion. I know that sounds really funny, but oxygen right. hydrates your skin. Everything. That's why it's literally um, a youthing kind of uh, um, modality. The, the gentleman that I studied from, Leonard Orr, who is uh, termed his modality rebirthing, um, way back 20 years ago, he's now in his 80s. He doesn't look one day over 60. Mm-hmm. And his energy is incredible. He still teaches huge corporate cathartic breath works in Brazil, all over the planet. Mm-hmm. And he swears by this. He gives himself a breathing session every day, like mm-hmm. once a day, you know, for an hour. Mm-hmm. That's it. And, mm-hmm. and he's fabulous. You know, I'm, I, we're all creatures of habit, so I have to admit, I do two breathing sessions a week, but when, when I hit an impasse, either emotionally or physically in my life, I had uh, intense uh, plantar fasciitis some years ago, and um, I did uh, a cold water breathing session, and it took two cold water breathing sessions to breathe out the plantar fasciitis, it was gone. That's usually six weeks. Wow. And what do you mean cold water? Cold water, there, there is, in the 10 sessions, there is a cold water breathing session where you are submerged in the top with your head out, breathing in cold water because it's extremely catalyzing and wonderful for your system and it's, uh, you breathe out any kind of latent disease processes. So it's a, a very powerful way of releasing any kind of physiological um, constrictions. So your body is in cold water, mm-hmm. you're beating air. Yes, your body and your head is out leaning and you're breathing. Yeah. Wow. That's in the 10 sessions, that's not for the workshop. Yeah. 
So here we go again. What can we say? It's nice when you start this five times, three times a day for five minutes. It's nice if you have a little affirmation. So we can say right now, I'm alive and I thrive till I'm 105. How is that? <laughs> That's a great uh, affirmation for your body to do that before you start breathing in the five minutes. Or you can also say with every conscious breath, I am extremely optimally healthy and alive. Yeah, so you, you do one affirmation and you don't have to keep on doing that, just do it once and then you breathe. Yeah, so it sets. Yeah. And you even told somebody to open their eyes. Is, do we need okay. to have our eyes open? When you are doing the 15 minutes, no, you don't. Um, and right now, you don't either. You don't have to have your eyes open. My te the tendency is for the five minutes when you have your eyes closed, a lot of the internal thought processes yeah. start to happen. Yeah. So when you keep your eyes open, it's just better to just okay. sense your breath, feel your breath. Don't be intellectual about this. Just as you're breathing, see and feel into all the sensations that come up in your body. Yeah? And you can do it too. Yay! <laughs> so here we go. We go for another five minutes. That'll be the second time, just to let you know you might have a very different experience the second time around. But if you still have tension in the same area, so chances are very 90% that the breath will go there and start to tingle and vibrate you. Okay, here we go. So deep inhale, relaxing on the exhale. Here we go, everybody. So take a deep inhale. You can do that on in your own speed. But once your inhale is filling up your upper chest, go for the exhale and then pick up the new inhale. So don't have there's a little gap at the end of the exhale and a little gap at the end of the inhale, but very, very uh, minor. So basically connect the inhale and the exhale. Beautiful. And breathe, inhale through your mouth and exhale through your mouth.
That's what you want, this is your birth rate, right? This is the way to live your life from a much more expanded state. Just within five minutes, wow, so amazing. That's great. Good, fabulous ladies and gents, we'll go around again. So um, I'm experiencing tingling in my upper arm, tingling throughout my legs, tingling in my head, and um, I feel pretty darn good. Yes. <laughs> our bodies um, are mirrors for our minds and emotions. So you have these wonderful tools. So about 80 to 85% of our physical symptoms are emotionally caused. Mm. So we hold back our emotions all the time. So there's very few venues for our modern society mm. to get into a cathartic, multi-experiential um, uh, kind of breathing release. So um, it's, it's wonderful to feel, and with <coughs> feeling more, you're healing more. Translates more energy through laughter, other people through crying, other people through feeling angry. You know, so anything that has been put under the rug comes up from the rug fairly quickly. So your connection between your implicit and explicit memory, your unconscious and your conscious, gets much more transparent, which is what we want, because that way you get healthy longer and you don't have to carry around all these psychosomatic things that will eventually be expressed through your body that should be expressed through your emotions. Right. Yes. Yeah, happiness at the same time, but my rug is being lifted, yes. <laughs> and relaxation, and tingling, and happiness. Mm -hmm. It's a great feeling. Beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, that's your birthright. Fabulous. Yay. I felt tingling further up in my legs yeah. this time, and I also got like a runner's cramp. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Um, and I felt pain in my neck and my chest. Yes. So that happens when there is residual tightness. And what happens, like I said, the breath highlights anything mm. that is already sort of tight. Mm. So it goes there and highlights. If you were to breathe longer, that would release. Mm. Yeah. On every emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual level. Could you say the dates again? Look yes, I have one. Oh, I have got so you can pick up the flyers at the end. Thank you. One is um, uh, August 4th, Sunday at Studio Zenith from 3 to 5. And the other one is this Friday at a Falls River Yoga Studio. Beautiful space as well from 6 to 8. Where's, where's that? That's in Northfield. Oh. Northfield Falls, oh. Route 12, okay. and five minutes away from Montpelier, very close. Oh. It's fabulous. Yeah, please come. Yeah. And you can come to both. <laughs> what a concept. You'll be levitating, literally. <laughs> and, <laughs> it's not a joke. When I, work with, uh, I, when I work with people that are above 70, 
empty. You know, normally, you know, some people that are not so much into exercise, they can't lift up their arm for a long time. When they start to do cathartic breath work, they're lying down and suddenly their arms will lift off by themselves and start to levitate for the entire session without any kind of effort. They're catching on. It was this midwife that was birthing her third child and her two children were around her. Her husband was behind her in a birthing tub. She was pulling out the baby by herself. The baby was breathing underwater. Then she disconnected the umbilical cord after 15 minutes. The baby was breathing underwater. Coming here, there was no crying. There was no trauma involved. So as a result of being born in gravity, you know, we have this frontal now up here on the top of our crown chakra, which usually when you're not born through gravity but in water stays open. So there's a little bit of a soft spot here that the baby has, which is our connection to the cosmos. And when you start to do breath work and you release your birth scenario, all the bones in your head and in your body will start to reconfigure themselves and become more pliable and, and subtle again. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, and I have two offices, one in Worcester and one in Boston. So if you need more private work because you're dealing with a, some kind of issue that might not be resolved in a group breathing session, you can come for private sessions as well.